So a lot of people are interested in like telling their story, blogging, writing, etc. But yeah, clearly no one said that they were doing any video. Um, now, I'm interested in why, but I was watching Laura there, listening to herself for the second time. And she immediately went like that. And um, there's certainly a thing where you hate your own voice and your own face. And um, I think if you're under 25, you're probably not built you know, with that you know, inbuilt narcissism <laughs> that young people seem to have. Um, but like, just if anyone wouldn't mind telling me, like, why is it, is there anything about video in particular that you're, like, why aren't you doing it, basically, is what I'm interested in. Videoing something, there's a lot of ums and ahs and ooh and ooh. Okay, and, and you think they're you think they're bad, the ums and the ahs, because I'm going to be doing a lot of um, those tonight. I prefer writing. Yeah. Okay. You like a polished thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. Just the bags under the eyes, yeah. the scruffy hair, <laughs> um, and the fact that you can't edit it, well, probably you can, but I would know how to, so if mm -hmm. you write something, if you think, oh no, I didn't mean to say that, you can go back and rewrite it. It's harder to, yeah, harder to craft a video. Yeah, the editing thing is a definite issue. Okay, anyone else? I was just going to say, I've, I've done like one video, and but I think before I used to have, you know, be a bit conscientious, and I was just like, oh, just do it. And now I've done it, and like actually, I realised as well, and that, that talk was also really interesting to me because I am much more auditory, like, like me writing actually takes more energy. Yeah. Because I can probably talk, and just doing that experience of doing it once, I'm like, okay, now this is something I feel so much more comfortable in front of it. Do you think you're an extrovert? Yeah. Yeah. I think extroverts like think out loud. Um, which is, you know, if someone goes for a drink with you, I'm, I'm kind of an extrovert as well. So a lot of my friends just listen to me talk, which is me just trying out my, you know, world ideas. Um, but yeah, I like definitely a lot of people prefer writing because I think it's like how they um, like to express themselves. Um, I think that I think that um, all of these tools, whether it's writing, photography, audio, video, like they're all kind of useful, and um, you, you know, it can depend on different contexts and what you're trying to do. But also, you can try things and you find your own thing. I think that video, it, it can add something that other things can't, um, in that people really get to see you. And there are a lot of things that don't translate um, with the exception of video. So if I was to ask Laura an awkward question, I'm picking on you somewhere, um, the very fact that she went, Ugh. That's a thing. That's a thing that happened. Nervous person. So some of the some of these kind of uh, interesting moments like work well with video. Um, and I think what I'm going to talk about is um, over the, the years that I've been making films for health charities, um, how I've kind of learned that I think that that kind of just honesty and raw authenticity and bravery is actually more valuable um, than making something that's good. And I think I'm going to try and convince you that um, you should worry way more about being honest than making something good. Um, so um, yeah, so I've been um, making films for health charities for, for a few years. Um, I spent a few years working um, a lot for a, a Parkinson's charity. Um, but um, increasingly, I've just spent a lot of time like working with lots of different health uh, charities and people basically living with long-term health conditions. Um, and uh, it was really interesting for me coming into charity. I didn't have any real desire growing up to do it. I kind of, kind of just wanted to do it, and I've stuck with it. And 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 all the other fun things that I was doing have kind of melted away. And I just want to make these charity films now. And um, a big part of uh, coming into the charity is you come in with all those preconceptions about what charity films are. And it just seemed to me at the beginning that most charity films were kind of particularly health charities, were of, say, sick people at home feeling sorry for themselves with some sad piano music behind, and they were making cups of tea, looking through family photo albums, and uh, it was kind of a bit depressing. And um, that's like a cliche charity film, right? And I think that, you know, it, it, the reason why those exist is because often your stories are, um, are used by charities um, because they're trying to do a good thing. They're trying to um, raise money 
or um, raise awareness about something or get some policy change or something. And so I think that the, those kind of tropes about like the way that charity films are made are actually come from a good place. Um, but it started to strike me that um, I think I think for the people that those films are about, those films aren't very helpful. So in the case of breast cancer, if you guys are watching a film made by a breast cancer charity um, where someone is just, oh yeah, I've got breast cancer, my life was really, really bad, um, please you know, give money to breast cancer. Like, I don't think that's very helpful to you guys um, because you're, that's, not, that's, that's not the message you want to hear. And actually, I think what is more useful is potentially what it's actually like to live with this thing um, and how does it affect your life. So I was really interested in making films like that um, and not trying to uh, you know, use the films to raise money and stuff like that. And, and if that's the aim, what kind of, how would you make those films and how could you make things a little bit differently? Um, so I just started, instead of like having a crew and lights and making like a good film, um, I just started turning up to places, just me, and just spending a lot of time with people and asking them nosy questions. Um, and one of the first times I did that um, is a clip with this young woman here who was diagnosed with Parkinson's at 29. Um, and I'm being very nosy about her relationship. If it will play. It won't play. There you go. Who is God if you can get married? Marriage girl if you can get married. I don't know. Um, he was alright. <laughs> I met him and we had instant chemistry, so to speak. And um, yeah. And you know what? It sounds so cliche, but you know when you've met the one. That sounds so corny and cliche, but you just know. Yeah. That's the right answer to say. <laughs> but you know what's interesting? You know when we got married, when we met, we never, we never foresaw that we'd be dealt such a curveball. Does that make sense? And then when it happened, I just, for, I swear to God, like when it happened, I just thought I want him to. If he watches this, he'll be shocked. But I want him to divorce me and just kind of leave me because why should he's young, he's still got a life, why should he be burned by the fact that I'm ill? Does that make sense? <laughs> and so she's kind of talking about something that she's never really talked about before. She's clearly a little bit uncomfortable, but actually sort of settles into it quite well. Um, and if I'd have turned up with four other people, with a bunch of lights and started asking her about her marriage, um, she probably wouldn't have, she probably would have told me to fuck off basically. But she, but you know, I think that she's allowing herself to sort of like go somewhere that, um, it's a real conversation, it's not um, an interview, it's not a collection of sound bites. Um, you know, she goes to the park every day with her kid, so that's where we went. Um, a lot of um, videos that I'm seeing now um, where you're trying to talk about your own life do the things you normally do, be in those kind of environments. Um, and don't overthink it. Um, and yeah, she, you know, I, I spent an entire day with her and made lots and lots of films just with this one person in this one day. Um, and the great thing about this is uh, her personality is very much retained, I think. Um, I really don't, I'm not watching this thinking, this is a person with Parkinson's. This is a very individual person and all of her uh, lovely bubbliness comes out. Um, and again, like I really started to think about making this for other people who have Parkinson's, not for the charity to use to talk about their work. And um, I, saw, I started to feel like it was sort of along the right lines when we started to post these things on Facebook and people aren't thanking the charity, they're thanking her. And they're, she's talk, they're talking directly to her. And then she gets to write back and have a wonderful experience by actually genuinely meeting people online and um, seeing some of that gratitude. Um, and like I said, I spent a whole day with her. Her husband came in from work at some point, so we picked up that conversation. Um, and she had this like really fun day. She was really nervous about me arriving. Like, who am I? I'm just some scouts guy who's turning over a house. Um, but by the end of the day, she was like, this has been really therapeutic, thanks. And I, 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 for me, I'm, I, that, that's far more interesting to me. Um, than making something that I know that's going to be like useful to a charity, um, and we're like good mates now, um, and she does she does loads of um, filmmaking stuff. 
herself now, which is great. Um, so I was really interested in just doing this a lot more. Um, and the fact that you're being, um, you're not worrying about quality and you're just um, genuinely turning up into re in people's real lives, you can kind of like, explore quite private and personal moments. Um, so, you know, she fell asleep at some point because she had Parkinson's and she's knackered and her drugs worn out. So that's good. If someone falls asleep in front of you, they're probably quite comfortable. Um, this person's about to have brain surgery and I turned up in the hospital. Um, I wasn't really supposed to be there, but I did. Um, this is um, a film about someone who has arthritis and um, for her in the morning, she's particularly like has uh, problems with fatigue um, and getting her kids ready is real stress, but she has like some help from her friends and family first thing in the morning. So I just turned up first thing in the morning and watched her get her kids ready for school, which is great. And then this person very bravely, um, she allowed me to go to her PET scan results uh, to find out if her cancer would come back. Um, and uh, she's a very, very brave person, like absolutely amazing. Um, and again, I spent two days with her. Um, I'll play you a little clip of her uh, now. Um, I realized putting this together, like all I'm clearly asking people is, I'm asking women about their love lives, clearly, that's like clearly what I'm interested in. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've, I've, you know, I've got hours and hours of footage of her, but I, I really like this moment because um, I think by, by this point, it's kind of moved on to a point where She's kind of volunt she's very comfortable, she's kind of volunteering some information that I didn't even really ask her about um, because she's kind of comfortable and she's feeling open and brave and stuff. Again, if we can play it. There we go. I keep saying to Tim that I would like him. I would like him to find somebody else. I want him to be looked after. You talked about that. Yeah. He tells me to shut up and he doesn't want to listen. Um, yeah, I'm with him. I think that's a bit of a weird conversation. <laughs> But he needs to find someone, you know? For me, I'm actively looking to see if there's anybody that I think, oh, she might be nice for him. Um, Hang on, are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. how long have you been doing this? I'd say only about maybe the past six months. Okay. I'm trying to fix things so that after I'm gone, it won't be so, so traumatic for them. But you're replacing yourself? Is what you're... Yeah, but she's never going to be well, satisfied. Exactly. You know, so that's the only cover part I'm getting. She is. I, I will pick her, but she will not be as good as me. What do you look for? I mean, you know, I'm on Tinder, right? What, <laughs> what do you look for in a partner of your partner? She said she can be skinny, but not too skinny. <laughs> um, She's, she's actually terminal. She's in a really good place at the moment. But, um, you know, I've been, I spent two days talking about dying, which is quite a hard thing to talk about. But she, as you can tell, is a very positive person. She's gone on this kind of journey herself. And um, she had actually been talking about a lot of her personal issues online in blogs and some videos before I turned up. Um, so she'd already sort of practiced a little bit, I think. And she was kind of in a, she's, she's in a really um, good place. Um, but what I really like about this is um, these are things that I think for the general public, you're not really supposed to say. <laughs> like these are kind of thing, uncomfortable truths that like people find quite awkward. But what I really like about what she's saying is I think it's actually very um, universal. Um, I think that um, you want the person that you love to be happy, even if you don't get to be with them. And I think a lot of people, regardless of their health um, situation, can, can relate to that. Um, and I think as you can see, unlike the first clip, like she does not need me to say these things. Like, I don't need to be there as a filmmaker for her to talk about this stuff. She could completely do it on her own, um, which is, I think, is very encouraging. And in fact, that she, she, she does that. So this is uh, like, I think a little bit before, but uh, in this clip, she's been talking about like hair loss and stuff. And again, this is on her own personal blog and she just films on her phone. All of these comments are, thank you for doing this. Um, she does feel strongly that like her story has some like value and can ha can help people. And I guess she had a hunch about that at the beginning, but over a couple of years that she's been writing blogs and things, um, she's just been she's stuck with it. And she's found it a really um, cathartic and um, positive experience. Um, and I think that um, in an ideal world, um, you wouldn't need filmmakers you would just have people film themselves. Um, so as well as like turning up to people's worlds and being very nosy, I'm also now really actively encouraging 
um, people to film themselves. And I'm trying to uh, work on a lot of film projects and uh, that, that bring a lot of those kind of stories together. So um, I worked on one um, for uh, in April for uh, Well Parkinson's Day. This is particularly interesting simply because um, all these Parkinson's charities from all over the world wanted to come together and do a thing. Um, and so the idea was that um, people from all over the world can just send me stuff. Just like we just literally said, just send me anything and we'll kind of, we'll kind of put something together. And the reason is that there are a lot of health conditions that are very, very complex, affect so many different kinds of people, and to try to tell the story of our health condition just from one person's point of view, if you're trying to tell this big global thing, um, is, is less useful, I think. Um, so I just made a little film that we sent out to people all over the world, encouraging them to send me footage. So it is 5 a.m. and I'm just I got like eight hours worth of footage from like a hundred people from all over the world. A lot of it wasn't in English, obviously, so that was a fun translating job. Um, and I turned it into like this 10 minute film. Uh, it was like all about Parkinson's, how it affected your, uh, your physical health, your mental health, your family, like the, the things you love doing. Because, uh, you know, for something like a, a condition like Parkinson's, very, very complex. And, and for me, I think if, if we really wanted to have people truly understand the condition, not just be aware of the condition, but understand it, we needed lots and lots of perspectives. Um, I'm just going to play you one, one clip of um, one guy who sent me something. <laughs> I'm sitting in my bathroom. Yes, I'm on my throne. And it's come to that point in life at 54, nearly 55, um, and we've been apart for over 10 years. But I'm now having to sport these fashionable items in the continent's pack. Yes, very sexy. It's just so good. Not a very uh, nice subject to talk about, but um, it's got me out of trouble a few times. It took me all year to sign the way of these. Sometimes I just have to give in and be sensible. So that's a subject. Um, that's a symptom of Parkinson's that affects a lot of people, but no one really talks about it. Um, and I didn't ask him to do it. I just said, tell me anything about Parkinson's that's affecting you. That's basically what the, the call out from said, and he, and he sent me that. Um, and um, it was great, people loved it, because it's a super honest, um, uh, take on something. Um, it's something that not a lot of people talk about, a lot of people know about, um, and um, I think even if I'd planned to talk about something like that, I wouldn't have done that. I actually think, given that subject, that's much better than anything I could have done. Um, and that's you know low quality, it's like done on a phone, it doesn't sound great, it doesn't matter. Like I think it's much better than anything I could have done. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, and um, yeah, made a big film containing lots of stuff like that. Um, so I think, I think there are three things that if you were thinking about making a film, talking on camera, using your phone, um, I think these are the three things. I think that your story is important. Um, it's gonna be helpful to other people. Doesn't have to be 
millions and millions of people. You don't have to become like a YouTube vlogging superstar. You're talking to very specific people who are interested in your life and can benefit from your experiences. Um, they might be um, at a similar place that you are in the journey, it might be earlier. You might find the experience fun of posting this stuff that most of the people that I work with send me an email the next day or a text that evening being like, this was really, really fun, I really, really liked it. And when the film goes out, they get to like reply to people on Facebook and it's just really like wonderful experience. Um, I think you should tell your story. I don't think you need to worry about representing people with breast cancer. I think you should just keep it very um, specific to you because as in a couple of these examples, I think that your experiences are more universal than you think they are. And I think you should just go niche, you know, talk about one specific symptom of a condition or one specific story because people will relate to it. Um, and I really think that you should just be honest and brave because I think if you're not doing that, um, you're actually, I don't think you're doing yourself justice. Um, as a filmmaker, I see my job is to, is to, poke people to really be honest about what they're really feeling. And at first that takes a while because they don't trust me, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I think if I don't get them to be truly honest and open up, then people don't get to really benefit from their stories. So I think that you really want to be brave enough to do that. Um, and it basically always, it's always fine. It's always fine. Um, so yeah, any questions at all? Do we have time for questions? Are we doing that after? Now it's good. How easy is it to upload videos to something like a blog? Uh, Do you need just completely different platform? You, 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 if you have a phone, you're fine. Okay. Um, I, I, I think for me, the, 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 the biggest thing I want people to, to realize is that like, if you just like, all those technical things that are like in the way like, oh video, I've got to edit it, blah, blah, blah. Like, I actually think it's more important just to start and just to just to do it. If editing is annoying and tricky, just don't edit. Just 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 put something up that's a bit scrappy and it's full of ums and airs. So what? Maybe learn how to, to edit later. I think that there's video, yeah, maybe it's a little bit more complicated than writing, but it doesn't have to be. I think that you just um, just you know, okay, put it this way, you've been writing your whole life. So at this point, you're probably quite good. Um, but this video thing's quite new, so you're just gonna, you're just gonna like, it's gonna be a bit scrappy at the beginning, that's okay. Um, the important thing is that you do it, in my opinion. And I'll add, I'll add to that, so if you're taking, taking a vlog, practicing at home, um, you know, really, really think about taking it quite close, because if you don't have an external microphone, which you won't have, you're just using your phone, you need to be about there. But just remember just to press stop quite quickly, so you're actually self-editing by pressing the start and stop pressing quite quickly, so then that'll save the editing at the beginning. And it's practice. Yeah, I could talk to you all day about cameras and how to edit. I could give you all these practical tips on how to do it. But the reality is you can Google that stuff. You can work it out later. Um, but what I can't help you with is like, what do you what you know? What do you have to offer? You know that has to come from you, and that's something you can't Google. So I think it is just like just be really brave and just start with it, and uh, be okay with the fact that you know it's going to go out and it's you know you, it's going to be your face on camera, and that's okay. The people around you that know you and will actually and really enjoy watching these films, and some strangers too. They've already seen your face. They don't care. Like they really don't care. All those hang-ups are your own. Like I said, if you're under 25, I would not have to convince any of you that filming was going to be a problem. Um, yeah. Hey. Um, what sort of uh, time frame would you put on a, uh, a video? If you're going to put it on a blog, I mean, you do not for too long, you don't want it too short. What sort of time do you want to know? Um, if I if I was if I was a social media expert, I'd tell you to make a film that was like ten seconds long. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I like making films, and I just want. I just think make just just make them as long as they're good. Mm -hmm. Um, if you have something to say, say it. Don't worry that you're rambling on for 20 minutes. Um, if you have something of worth to say, people will watch. Um, and you're, you might tell a story that takes 20 minutes to tell. If it's a good story, people are going to watch it. Um, people have much longer attention spans than I, than I think the internet tells you. Um, and I think actually that the more niche you go, the more that that length, but you, you can get away with being longer basically. So you're already in a world where if someone's found your blog, 
they're hyper interested in this specific subject and what you have to say. So they're going to certainly give you more time. But a social media person would utterly disagree with me. So that's a fun battle to have. I've only really done it a couple, put some, couple of videos on my blog, and it does help to have a little bit of a practice, and it does help to, although you want it to be authentic and to speak from the heart, it did kind of help to almost make myself a couple little notes, like what am I gonna, what am I gonna say, and kind of in what order. And yep. then I sort of started it a couple of times, and I watched it back and went, oh my god, and I just did it anyway. But then saying that, the video that got the most attention was my friend shaving my head. Yeah. And that was a spur of the moment decision to do it, and another friend happened to be there, and I said, just film it. And she was like, freaked out. Shall I not film that? I said, I want a record. She said, you can put it online, I went, yeah, of course I have. <laughs> 20 million, 20,000 people. And that was completely unplanned in my friend's kitchen. She's watched it back, she's gone, 20,000 people have seen my kitchen, I didn't do it washing up. <laughs> So I think you've just done my talk in like 30 seconds. That's, that's basically it. I think the reason why it did so well is, is, the, is the very reason why your friend was like, I don't want to film this. Is it a spur of the moment? Yeah. Well, no, it's because it's a, it's a scary thing. Yeah. You know, it's like, I talk about being brave. It's not just like, the, 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 there's meaning behind that. Um, so you have done a brave thing by filming it. It's already made one person uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Probably worth doing then. Mm -hmm. um, it gives meaning to what is actually a Traumatic. Yeah. The friend who shaved my head was devastated, absolutely devastated. I was fine with it, mm. but the fact that I've got lots of photos of it, yeah. I've my photo with it, I didn't yeah. video it, um, was really helpful. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, like I've talked about this idea of like people um, finding it therapeutic and cathartic, and it's very hard for me to to relay that to you. I'm really glad that there's a couple of quotes at the back for people talking about how writing's really helped them. But it, it, in my experience, it's really, really true that actually having people talk about the, the thing they're going through, but also documenting some of it, it's very, very empowering um, because you're very much taking ownership of it. Um, I don't really, yeah, that's basically it, I would say. Cheers, thanks.